This young Chinese man was left alone with the ghosts of his past. Even if his claims that he actually sees ghosts are true, it's still amazing how much horror they could bring to a man who himself caused the female population of Hong Kong to live in fear. If, for a moment, you feel sorry for this poor fellow, then banish the thought, because in front of you is one of the most dangerous serial killers, the so-called sex devil, who sees the ghosts of his victims. In this episode of Histographics, we will tell you a story scarier than the plot of the Parasite movie. Our main character is the serial killer and rapist Lam Kuo Kwan. In 1980, the father and stepmother of nine-year-old Lam, along with their five children, moved to the satellite town of Hong Kong, Tun Min. At this time, the city was just beginning to develop and was a dangerous and dreary place. About 480,000 people lived in the city, many of whom, like the Kuo Kwai family, came in search of a better life. Instead of a fresh start and a new perspective, the family got a cramped room in a decaying house. The growing number of suicides committed from its rooftop forced the administration of the building to ban access and lock the door. Lamb's father was drinking heavily and staying silent, while the rest of the family continuously watched TV. Silence had become the main rule of coexistence between the seven people occupying a tiny apartment. One of the sisters of the Hong Kong devil later said that in any given week, only a few words could be heard in their house. At that time, Lam eventually withdrew into himself, feeling terribly bored in vain. This would soon be used to explain his heinous crimes. The typical neighbors in Tun Moon were prostitutes, drug addicts, and members of the local mafia. The latter even forced school kids to work for them. Those who did not want to join the gang could suffer the fate of 13-year-old Ip Kin Mi, who was beaten to death by his classmates in 1992 for refusing to serve the mafia. The school in Tun Moon was the third for young Lam. He didn't want to study, and the teachers kept complaining about the boy's behavior. When he was 15 years old, his father left the family and fled to Macaw in fear of local loan sharks. At the same time, Lam finally abandoned his studies, preferring to hang out with his peers. Many of them were gang members who amused themselves by robbing shops, assaulting passersby, or members of other gangs. To satisfy their boredom, they even started killing stray dogs. The Chinese man spent his days in a cramped apartment, working part-time on occasion and meeting up with his friends at night. He started smoking marijuana and consuming light drugs because that's what everyone did. He became especially fond of alcohol and gambling. Lam would wander the streets for hours, drinking beer and brandy. According to him, this caused a sense of mental desolation and allowed him to forget himself for a while. He once met a girl and potential partner, but Lam considered her too good and preferred the company of prostitutes. Instead of card games, he started taking trips to Macaw, the local Las Vegas, and began to steal cars. He then discovered illegal car racing, which became his new hobby. Lam was a really great driver. Local inspector Wang Wen Ki even called him a racing genius. In illegal races, the Chinese man felt powerful bursts of adrenaline and popularity. After that, everyday life became even more unbearable for Lam. He crossed the point of no return on April 24, 1992. As usual, after getting drunk and driving through the streets, he came across a dark-haired 19-year-old girl in a passing taxi. He followed the car to the passenger's house and managed to jump into the elevator with her. Lam squeezed the girl's throat with his right hand until she lost consciousness. When the Chinese woman woke up, she found that she had been raped. Sexual crimes were common in the city, so the police and the media didn't pay much attention to the incident. Lam had now found a terrible way to satisfy his thirst for status, power, and lust. Two months later, Lam was prepared for a second attack. He slept at home all day, and when he woke up in the evening, he felt the usual gloom. He happened upon a 32-year-old waitress returning home at 4.30 a.m. from the Versailles Club. He tried to snatch the bag from her, but the woman resisted, so Lam used his hands. After the rape, he calmly went home and fell asleep. Over the next four months, four women between the ages of 28 and 39 became his victims. The rapist committed all the crimes as he did the first time. He entered the elevator with lone women, strangled them, and then took them to the landing where he completed his crimes. It was no longer possible to ignore the fact that a serial rapist had appeared in the city. The press were creating panic, and the police were investigating. It quickly became clear that none of the victims could describe the offender in sufficient detail. A sample of the rapist's biological material was deemed useless. A plausible sketch could not be made, and there was nothing to compare the samples with. While the panic in the area was growing, Lam crossed the next line. He killed another victim. Early in the morning, 50-year-old Li Hing was returning home alone. 
She could not have expected the events that would follow her death when a young man entered the elevator with her. This time, Lamb did not consider his strength when he strangled the woman to death. He abused her corpse, after which he took the victim's purse. The sex devil, as he was nicknamed by the local media, talked about that day in a horrifyingly casual way. He decided to mention how, before the crime, he bought food from a hawker and drank beer in the park. After the incident, the city was completely engulfed in panic. Local politicians took the opportunity to accuse the police of negligence, although in reality the cops were in an extremely difficult situation. Before the news of Lee Hen's death became known, at least 20 people passed by her body on the way to work. The screams of the previous victims were heard by their neighbors, but no one reacted. Moreover, the victims themselves often did not report to law enforcement agencies. For this reason, it is believed that the actual number of Lamb's victims is much higher. In terms of police work, female officers were put in very precarious situations in the hunt for the Hong Kong devil. Undercover law enforcement officers were trying to catch the maniac with live bait. Female police officers, individually, were going up in elevators early in the morning in areas where previous crimes had been committed in the hope of catching the killer. In theory, reinforcement was waiting for the female officers on the upper floors where Kwok usually raped his victims. But in practice, the officer may not survive the elevator ride. Pathologists have calculated the gripping force of the rapist hands. According to them, the offender can kill his victim within five seconds, while a short elevator ride usually takes twice as long. It is alleged that all female police officers willingly volunteered to act as the victim. In addition to live bait, the cops studied all previous cases of sexual crimes, domestic violence, and robbery. Some of the men were detained and arrested, but Lam Kwok Wai was not among them. A few months after the murder, Lam was once again in need of an adrenaline rush. The young man called his friend Wang Kwong Ching and confessed to the murder, which was being reported on the news. In response, the friend simply asked if Lam really liked women over 50. Kwok then asked if his friend thought he was mentally unstable. This time, Wong said he didn't know how to answer and cut the conversation. Later, he turned to the police, but he could not betray his comrade, noting only that the face in the composite maniac should be narrower. The sex devil committed his second murder at 5 a.m. April 14, 1993. 22-year-old DJ Mac Su Han did not make it home after performing at the New World Hotel. This time, at least 40 people ignored the dead body laying on the stairs between the fifth and sixth floors. Later, it became known that Su Han came to her senses when the rapist pulled her out of the elevator. The girl began to scream frantically and tried to fight off the rapist. Nobody came to rescue her, and the resistance of the victim made Lam feel even stronger. To silence the girl, he used his death grip. According to Lam, he did not want to kill her. It happened by accident. Another victim of the Hong Kong devil literally blew up, Toon Moon. The night after the murder, several hundred people attended a protest. The citizens themselves created volunteer patrol units. Lam realized that the hype was too much and decided to visit his sister in one of the districts of Hong Kong. There he did what one would expect from a serial rapist. He attacked another victim. It was the owner of a karaoke bar, 23-year-old Lo Su Min. This happened on July 11, 1993. At that time, the rapist tried to chat with his still living victim. He asked if she was very frightened. At first, Su Man kept silent, but then she hit Lam in the face several times. The slaps cost the young woman her life. After her attempted escape, Lam locked his hands on the girl's neck, but even this did not compare to the most terrible crime of the sex devil. The story of his last victim could have been a scene from a film by Lars von Trier. That time, Lam attacked a 21-year-old girl. In the midst of the torture, he stopped and began to talk to the victim. She was so scared that she kept up the conversation. They walked down the street, smoking a cigarette. Lam turned and asked the girl, just beaten and raped by him, if she would meet with him again. In fear, the victim agreed and accepted the invitation to go to the cinema the following evening. The rapist promised that he would tidy himself up and impress the girl. As one can imagine, the victim did not want to be further exposed to Lam, so she turned to the police for help, and also to her brother, who worked in the correctional service. The maniac was ambushed. At 8.30 p.m., Kwok came to the date fully dressed in a white shirt and black trousers. The girl gave the secret sign to the police several times. She scratched her head. Realizing that the signal was not seen, the Chinese woman decided to simply shout. It worked, but Lam also darted for the door. He was caught for two reasons. First, 
the rugby tackle from the victim's brother, and the second was the heavy leather boots worn specifically for the date. Psychologists also note the third and possibly the only compelling reason, the subconscious desire of the rapist himself to be caught. There's no other way to explain his surreal behavior. Among Hong Kong's serial rapists, Lam Kwok Wai has the most number of victims. Officially, there were 10 of them, but the police believe that at least six more victims did not come forward to the authorities. It was hard for the police to see a cruel killer in the pitiful, constantly sobbing Lam, who was begging the officers to visit him in prison. Chief Inspector Wong suggested that the young man just wanted to be loved. Investigators had a hard time, especially after the Chinese man confessed to the murder of three women. After this, he fell off his chair in a fit and claimed that the ghosts of his victims were flying around the table and watching him. The psychiatrist learned that the 23-year-old man was obsessed with the strength of his arms. He often talked about them and constantly stroked them during the court hearings. The killer called his right hand a fork and even tried to strangle himself with it. It would seem that the young man's insanity was obvious, and the defense tried to build a case in court based on that. But the mental state of the accused did not play a role there. Lamb himself has repeatedly admitted his desire to harm his victims, so the court sentenced him to 11 life sentences on 18 charges. Lam Kwok Wai was found guilty of three murders, eight rapes, and seven robberies. There were 127 witnesses in the case, and the press covered every detail. Also, the story of the Hong Kong devil formed the basis for the plot of the Chinese film, The Rapist, which was released in 1994. So what punishment do you think Lam deserves? Let us know your thoughts in the comments, and if you want to hear more interesting, creepy stories, subscribe to our channel, like, and just in case, don't go out in the early morning alone.